G'day, I'm Nick Goldschmidt, winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards and Forefathers. Style of Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, so white wine style. This is a little bit tricky, so hopefully you can follow along with what I'm talking about. When you think about style, when you grab a glass of wine and you smell that glass of wine, we break fruit down into warm fruit flavours and cool fruit flavours. Hopefully you got me so far. So high-end tropical warm fruit would be like pineapple. As we get a little bit cooler, we talk about melon. As we get a little cooler again, we talk about stone fruit. Stone fruit like peaches and nectarines. Cooler again, we talk about pip fruit, apples and pears. Uh, we talk about citrus. And then finally we get down to, to grass. And so you can imagine pineapples, very warm, tropical, grassy, very cool. And sort of a little bit leaner. The other two words that you find winemakers talk about is structure and texture. I'm going to draw another line on here representing the structure of the wine and the texture of the wine. Sorry for my poor handwriting, not one of my majors. I was more of a scientist. But when you think about a wine that has structure, it comes in your mouth kind of broad and then tightens up as it comes through the mouth. So it sort of has this lean feel in a negative sense. So if this is a picture of your tongue, sorry, bad drawing again of a tongue, but as the wine comes in your mouth, it sort of does this factor. And things that make a wine more structural will make a wine tighter on the inside of the mouth. We talk about acid. We talk about the temperature that we serve the wine at, which is obviously very important. Uh, wood. Obviously a lot of winemakers use wood and carbon dioxide and you always know about carbon dioxide because that's in champagne but in white wines we also have a little bit of residual CO2, a little bit of residual carbon dioxide because it sort of also gives a bit of an acid feel. So that describes structure. On the textural side you can imagine a wine on your tongue coming in kind of broad and finishing kind of broad and things that make a wine more textural and I don't want to get into a science lesson here but pH which is also part of acid. Alcohol, which is very important, obviously comes from sugar. The malolactic fermentation, which we can talk about in one of our future episodes. And then of course, the most important thing being the fruit. So these four things are making the wines a little bit broader. These four things are trying to make the wines a little tighter. So it's the art of the winemaker to get these things in balance, to make a wine that's gonna come through your mouth, last the whole time, and still finish round and supple. So when we go to the vineyard, the things that we look for in terms of Chardonnay, if you take one of these styles of Chardonnay that tend to be bigger and fuller, some people describe as buttery, you can imagine that they're very high on the textural end of the spectrum. And when you smell the wine, if it's from a cooler climate, you tend to get more of a stone fruit sort of character. And so you can imagine that that wine doesn't have as much structure as Sauvignon Blanc but certainly has some structure. And if it's in a cooler area, you'll also get some citrusy elements. If you're in a warmer area, you'll also get the same texture. In fact, you may even get a little bit more, but you'll get warmer fruit, perhaps not the same structure, and the wine style will be a little bit different. Sauvignon Blanc is completely different. Sauvignon Blanc, we generally don't use malolactic. We also don't use wood. So quite different winemaking. We also pick at lower sugar to try and emphasize fruit which means we also have higher acid. So when you think about Sauvignon Blanc as opposed to Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc is going to have much higher structural elements. It'll certainly be a lot cooler in terms of its fruit elements and will be more citrusy and almost towards grassy. And if you have a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, you'll find that the closer you are to the, to, well, the further south that you go, the more grassy you can get. And there's some great Sauvignon Blancs from the town of Marlborough, which of course you can get on Vino Shipper. And I'd also recommend getting Forefather Sauvignon Blanc on Vino Shipper because you can really see what I'm talking about in terms of cool climate, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, which is really the home of Sauvignon Blanc. Up here in the Dry Creek or in Sonoma, Sonoma Valley, which also grows a lot of Sauvignon Blanc, you'll find that the structure of the wine is the same, but you'll have a slightly warmer fruit element and you won't have quite as a, as a cool element as what you'll get in New Zealand. So again, quite a different style. So when you go home at night, grab a bottle of white wine, just think about 
where it is in terms of its warmth. Is it warm, pineapple-y, melony, tropical? Or is it a little bit more cool climate, grassy and citrus? And then on your mouth, when you drink that wine, just breathe a bit of air in. I know it's a little hard for you to do, but just, just take a little breath as you have that wine in your mouth, suck a bit of air in, and that'll start to show whether the wine is a little bit more structural or a little bit more textural. And the way I think about wine is, when I go home, and I actually drink a lot of Chardonnay, believe it or not, when I go home at night, I like to have a glass of Chardonnay, just as a, as a palate cleanser for the day, and I'll actually prefer to drink a Sauvignon Blanc with a little bit more structure to go with my meal because it has a little bit more zip and character and mouth, mouth gripping. And I'll leave you with one interesting story or a big wake up that I had when I was making wine in Portugal. I don't know if you've been to Portugal, but Portugal's all about port. And when you hang out with winemakers, it gets very tedious. I had ports, three ports for breakfast, three ports for lunch, and three ports for dinner. It was the most incredible trip in my early years. And by the third day, I said to one of the winemakers at lunchtime, as I'm eating those barnacles that you have in Portugal, you've got to get those long skewers, and you try and get that barnacle out of that shell, and it's 110 degrees outside, and you're sweating, and you've got barnacles, and you've got a port, like, anyway, whatever. So I asked for a glass of white wine, and they came running out, and they said, well, we do have a glass of white wine, but we don't usually recommend them, but for you, we'll give you a glass of white wine. They filled it up to the top. I grabbed that glass of wine. It's so hot. I just pound this thing because there's so much condensation coming off. I'm sweating. I put this wine in my mouth and I swallow it and I'm like, oh my goodness, what the heck was that? Because my whole mouth had just gone. <laughs> it had so much acid. It was so cold. It had so much CO2 that my whole mouth sort of puckered. It was off this chart on this terms of structure. But when you think about it, afterwards it was like, am I thirsty or am I hungry? And it's that sort of cleansing sensation that a good Sauvignon Blanc, or in this case a Vene Verde from Portugal can give you, where it really cleanses the mouth and really wants you to go back and have a, another mouthful of food or have another glass of wine. And that's really what we're talking about. So when you go home at night, think about what you're eating with that wine and how you're drinking it, what temperature you're serving it at. Is it more structural or is it a little bit more textural? And I hope you really enjoy the wines and think about this a little bit as you drink those wines when you go home.